good Saturday evening. Welcome inside the Prince William Ice Center. It's Hockey Night in Woodbridge. Saved by Dylan Dallaire. My goodness. And that is how the third period ends. The Potomac Patriots goaltender, Dylan Dallaire, has kept them alive into overtime. In hockey rules, it is sudden death. Next goal wins. Defense on three. One, two, three. Defense. Oh, boys, come up, boys. Hey, get up here. Get up here. Let's go. Beautiful morning in Northern Virginia. Big win for Premier last night. Um, you know, takes a step in the direction that we want to go with the program uh, when we can start pulling out some some victories like that. Some huge saves from Delaire at the end of the game to get us into overtime when we were shorthanded, and then Andrews burying one on the power play to to give us the extra point over Carolina. Little things, stuff like that, wasn't going in our our favor in years past, and. You start to see some of the bounces go our way. You've got to think that uh, we're starting to kind of put things together a little bit. So happy to see that, and hopefully it just keeps equating to you know, more success for the for the boys on the ice and for the coaches. It's interesting driving through the neighborhood that I grew up in, and I remember inline skating up and down the sidewalks to get to elementary schools to play roller hockey and. There just wasn't ice rinks close enough, and, uh, and and I remember taking this drive, you know, right after I turned 16 and could drive, and I was working as a skate guard at the rink, and it's kind of surreal, even still doing this every day, to drive through the neighborhood that I grew up in, and be going to the rink that I now own. It's uh, it's it's pretty fulfilling. The Prince William Ice Center, a sprawling 74,000 square foot facility located in Woodbridge, Virginia, is the rink that co-owners RJ Ziegler and Sean Clark are transforming into an international hockey destination. Ziegler repeatedly credits his partner Sean Clark with providing the tools and opportunities necessary for the facility to continue to grow for years to come. But local residents will recall the time when an original ice rink was here before a tragic accident took it away with no guarantee of coming back. Well, in 2010, we had uh, a large blizzard in this area, and uh, that blizzard resulted in like 30-something inches per square foot of snow on the roof of the building that was here originally. Wasn't designed to handle that amount of snow, uh, and the building collapsed. We had a total loss. There was, there was no injuries, nothing like that. Um, and so, as a result, we had to completely demo that facility and build a new one. All of the full-time managers at the time kind of made wish lists, put them together, and the owners that built the rink at that time figured out what they could accommodate, what they wanted to accommodate, and the result was the, the new Prince William Ice Center. This facility, uh, while it also expanded the footprint on the land by a little bit, uh, it also grew upward. So the amount of square footage in the building that we have to utilize to create programs uh, and uh, have an infrastructure for uh, our teams was increased exponentially. When I arrived here, my first thoughts were, uh, 
just thinking of how big it was and never been to a big arena like this. It's a double pad and it's nice. The, re the locker room's really nice too, I really like that. You got a pro shop, you get to buy your stuff local, you don't have to travel 45 minutes or however long to the nearest hockey store and you know the money you spend here is going to the rink. With all the rinks I've been to, I spent from age 4 to 38 at, at my playing career. So I was I would win plenty of rinks and again, I walk into this arena and the upgrades they had done before I had got here and since I've gotten here, I don't really think that uh, a lot of these kids realize how privileged they are to, to have a rink like this and, and hopefully they take that to their advantage and use it. Today's game is a charity game to benefit the family of a hockey enthusiast who is close to the Patriots organization. RJ meets with head coach Josh Gratton before the puck drops. Um, so I'm going to get on like with a mic and just say a couple, a couple words real quick. Yeah, yeah. And then um, we'll do a ceremonial puck drop between Hart and their captain. Yeah. And um, after that, it's just... You know, maybe I'll jump back up there and say a few things. But. Every member of the organization, from player to owner, knows that community involvement is vital to the program's growth and success. For the ownership, the goal is not only to create better players, but also better people. These guys are focused on hockey and trying to become the best hockey players they can and trying to advance to college hockey. And maybe for some it goes even further than that. But in reality, we're teaching them life lessons, right? How are you working? How are you dealing with adversity? How are you working with other people to accomplish common goals? You know, what kind of leadership skills do you have? How resilient are you? I think that for me as a, as a GM now and not having the day-to-day hands-on stuff with the players, I like to see that type of development in the players, right? I'd like to see um, them developing as people and as athletes. So I think it's very evident that they're focused on the players. Sean, our partial owner especially, he, he buys in completely to our team, and so does Gratton as well. And they're all, they just want all of us to succeed this season. Good Sunday afternoon. Welcome inside the Prince William Ice Center. We're about to get going in the Premier Division game. Atmosphere before a game starts, we try and stay pretty serious. When we're getting in the locker room to get uh, dressed or we're watching the elite team, we, uh, we're always getting dialed on the game. Every game we play is live streamed, whether it's here or whether it's at a different facility. So scouts can just go online now. They're watching online. So if I can jump in the booth, talk about some of our players, highlight some guys that, hey, I heard I should, maybe I should be listening for this guy, then we're just giving them a little bit more of a push into the, the, the vision of these scouts. The underrated part of that back check, and I think it was McGrath that actually got his stick on it, was he got his stick on it enough to keep it from, from the Carolina player, but not so much that he tipped it into his own net. And that was a, that's, an, that's an underrated play, really solid. Up to the corner, Wyasek and GM Batista go to the board. Now it's around to the far wall for Jallo. Great play by Jallo. Any, anytime you got a guy with speed like Jallo has, you know, you want to see them use that speed to try to create scoring chances. Got through traffic, in on Dowler, and he makes the save. Tied at 3-3 late in the second period, the Patriots are called for not one, but two penalties. Two for slashing and five for spearing and a game misconduct. Seven minutes of power play time coming up to the Hurricanes. The opposing team now has seven minutes of one extra player on the ice. It is up to the Patriots' penalty kill lines to ease the pressure on their goaltender. This is easier said than done. The Patriots managed to kill four minutes of the penalty, but now must strategize for the remaining penalty time at the start of the third and final period of play. This winger here sprints straight to the bench. We're 
ready for the third period. This game tied at three. The Hurricanes start the period with three minutes, 35 seconds of carryover power play time due to the seven minutes and penalties. Despite their best efforts, the five minute major penalty for Spearing will prove costly to the Patriots. Centering pass a shot, they score! It's a power play goal and the Hurricanes lead four to three. Pass across Hop a shot, he scores. Another power play goal for the Hurricanes. This is a period that will test the resolve and drive of every player, but the Patriots are not known to back down from a fight. This one ends. A five goal third period for the Hurricanes results in an 8 3 win this afternoon and a split of the weekend series. You guys didn't quit, you battled. I have nothing wrong with that. Marcus, good job in there. Dylan, good job all weekend. Listen, we put this one behind us. We learned from our mistakes, okay? We got Richmond on, on Wednesday. Back to work, we get this train back on tracks, all right? Let's go, good job, boys. I did it when I was playing as well. Is when things are going well, you're on cloud nine. When things aren't going as well, you're ready to quit hockey and everybody's, everything's going against you. So it's, it's working with a positive attitude and building a winning culture. But a winning culture doesn't just mean you win hockey games. It means you pick people up when they're down. You, you, learn, how to, how, you learn how to be a good winner and you learn how to lose as well. And nobody likes to lose, but it happens. You're not going to win every game. And it's just keeping everybody positive when those things aren't going exactly the way they should be. After a loss, you got to just have a short memory. You got to forget that last game and jump back on the horse and take the good parts of the loss and make it better next, next game. There's always tomorrow and there's always a good week of practice ahead of us and then time for us to come ready for the games the next week and just to show what we're about. I do definitely, I, I, feel, I feel lucky. It is kind of surreal sometimes. I do kind of think about it every once in a while when I drive to work. I've done interviews in the past, you know, the whole like w with people asking me questions about, you know, starting here and working my whole way up and having been in the same place for 20 some years and now owning it and where do I want to go from here? And um, I think most of the time right now, I try to just kind of enjoy every day. It's not all, it's not all awesome. There's, you know, when you deal with a, a sport that is expensive, um, it also comes with a certain uh, expectation from a lot of people and you, all you can do is your best to try to give them a good experience and try to do everything that you set out to. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm lucky to be where I am. I'm lucky to have the people that I do have around me working with me and um, I'm excited for what's coming in the future because um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot more really awesome stuff coming. And so I think that also energizes me and gets me going, you know, to, to keep pushing forward. On the next episode of Beyond Hockey. Beginning of the season, we're just warming up. 